Now we'll look at an example of determining the arc length of a space curve given by a vectored value function. We're asked to find the length of the helix given by r of t for t on the closed interval from negative five to eight. Let's first look at this graphically. If we were to graph the vectored value function, we would have this space curve or this helix. And let's go ahead and pause this. Let's let it rotate a little bit more. Let's go ahead and pause it here. Notice how there are two points shown on the helix. This is the point when t equals negative five, and this is the point when t equals positive eight. The arc length would be the distance traveled from this point to this point if we travel along the helix shown here. So the distance this point is traveling to the point on the right would be the arc length or the length of the helix. Another way to think of this is, if this was a coil or a spring, if we were to cut the spring at this point and this point and then make it straight, the length would be the arc length. The arc length is equal to the def integral of the magnitude of r prime of t integrated from a to b, which is equal to the integral of the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared plus c prime of t squared integrated from a to b, or in our case, from negative five to eight. So to begin, notice x of t is equal to five cosine four t, y of t is equal to five sine four t, and z of t equals five t. Next, we'll find the derivatives, and then we'll set up the integral to find the arc length. So x prime of t is equal to five times u derivative of cosine four t. Notice we'll have to apply the chain rule here. So we'll have five times the derivative of cosine four t would be negative sine four t times u derivative of four t, which is four. So we have a derivative of negative twenty sine four t. And then for y prime of t, we'd have five times the derivative of sine four t, which is cosine four t times the derivative of four t, which is four. So we have a derivative of twenty cosine four t. And then for z prime of t, we'd have five times the derivative of t, which is just one, five times one equals five. Which means the arc length s is equal to the integral of the square root of x prime of t squared, which would be negative twenty sine four t squared plus y prime of t squared, which would be twenty cosine four t squared plus z prime of t squared, which would be five squared. We want to integrate on the interval from negative five to eight. Let's continue on the next slide. We'll begin by simplifying this radicand. So if we square negative twenty sine four t, since negative twenty squared would be four hundred, we'd have four hundred and then sine four t squared would be sine squared four t. Plus, if we squared twenty cosine four t, we'd have four hundred cosine squared four t. Then of course, five squared is twenty-five. Now let's focus on these two terms here. Notice these two terms share a common factor of four hundred. If we factored out four hundred from just these first two terms, we'd have four hundred times the quantity sine squared four t plus cosine squared four t. And we should recognize the Pythagorean identity, cosine squared four t plus sine squared four t is equal to one. So this simplifies to four hundred times one or four hundred. So notice how we'd have the square root of the quantity four hundred plus twenty five. So we'd have the square root of four hundred twenty five. So this simplifies nicely to the integral of the square root of four hundred twenty-five 
integrated with respect to t from negative five to eight. Let's go ahead and simplify the square root of 425. Since 425 is equal to five times 85, and 85 is equal to five times 17, the square root of 425 is equal to the square root of five times five times 17, which simplifies to five square root 17. So we can write this as five square root 17 times integral of, if we want, one dt. So we would have five square roots of 17 times the antiderivative of one with respect to t, that would be t. And again, our limits of integration are from negative five to eight. So we'll have five times square root 17 times when t is eight, we just have eight, minus when t is negative five, we have negative five. So this simplifies to five square root 17 times 13. So the exact arc length, or length of the helix would be, well five times 13 is 65, so 65 times the square root of 17 units. Let's also get our decimal approximation, which I've already done to save some time. It's approximately 268.0019 units. So if we go back to our graph one more time, the distance along the helix from this point to this point is approximately 268 units, meaning if this point travels along the helix from this point to the point on the right, as we see here, the distance traveled would be approximately 268 units. I hope you found this helpful.